Young here, and welcome back to another video. And this video was also requested by Zage. Shout out to Zage for making this video happen. And he recommended my top five favorite comic book movie fight scenes of all time. But I am going to do a top ten instead because there's a lot, and I think these are the best in my opinions. And none of them are any fight scenes from Avengers. The first Avengers movie, Infinity War, and Endgame because those will obviously be the top three. So. I honestly would put them in the top three, but I'm not putting them on the list because that seems totally unfair because you got an entire superhero team together, especially in Endgame, the third act. I actually, I would obviously put that in number one, but I feel like that wouldn't be fair. So here we're going to put some standalone comic book movie fight scenes. So let's begin with number 10. Coming at number 10 is the Civil War airport fight scene, and I, and I consider this probably the best scene in... Civil War movie, and I was really excited for this scene when I first saw it, because I was really excited. Before Endgame, if Infinity War came out, I said this was my favorite MCU movie, maybe because of the airport fight scene, like I said, but it's on this, it's on number 10, it's not, and I don't find it the best out of the other nine when I'm about to talk to, because most of it's filled with CGI, and most of the background CGI, most of the characters CGI, like, Basically, everyone's wearing a max. Ant-Man, Spider-Man, Iron Man, War Machine, Vision. The only people who are, like, all in Black Panther. The only people who are, like, really there are Captain America, Scarlet Witch, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. That's it. So, yeah, this fight seems still awesome, but just too much CGI. So, let's move on to number nine. Coming at number nine is the Incredible Hulk third act fight scene with Abomination. Now, you probably were surprised that I put this on the list because besides the Avengers movies, I say, well, obviously, but I say this is the best standalone MCU fight scene of all time because I find this an underrated comic book film, and I say it's the number one underrated comic book film of all time. If I did a video saying top ten most underrated comic book movies of all time, this would be number one. And I, and a lot of people always put this at the bottom of their MCU movies. They always rank this at, like, the 23rd, like, the, they say, like, oh, it's the worst out of them all, but I disagree, I say it's one of the best, I say it's my 8th or 7th favorite of the, well, no, probably 8th or ninth favorite of the MCU, and this is the very first movie I ever saw in my entire life, and that's why it has a special place in my heart, and it's how I first heard of the Hulk character, and, the, and everything interests me in this movie, and especially, Hulk has emotion in this film, because, unlike the other ones, he actually feels pain in this film, because... When Abomination, like, stabs him with his elbow thing, well, probably the elbow, you know what I mean, a spike elbow, he, like, Hulk feels pain, like, he's literally, Hulk is literally bleeding and in pain, he's, like, screaming, like, that proves that, like, Hulk has emotions more than just being angry, that's why I wish we had another Hulk film in the MCU, where, because now he's just, like, a side character now, because he's, like, the big angry guy, he's basically, like, in the MCU movies now, like, I'm the angry guy, and sometimes the funny guy. Sometimes he'll make us laugh, especially in Endgame, but it's too late for Endgame because they ruined it. But if they, I, I can't wait to see that She-Hulk show because we could get a redeeming Hulk and see why he did what he did in Endgame. And I really want to see a solo Hulk movie again for the MCU or anything in general. I don't care what happens, just get me a solo Hulk movie. So yeah, this is the coming at number. This is number nine. And now it's going to number eight. Now, coming at number eight is the Shazam fight scene with, um, I forgot the villain's name, but, um, he, I, it's the mall fight scene, because I'm showing a clip of that scene, and it's where he got into a fight with his friend, and the, the villain came in, and they were fighting in the mall, and I thought it was, at the same time, intense and funny at the same time, because where he throws a Batman toy, he's like, get him, Batman, the Batman toy says, on Batman, and the villain's just like, really? And I thought that was hilarious, so yeah like flying all over the mall and I thought it was just hilarious and the I want to talk about the other fight scene in the third act because I think that one's too because I think both fights all fight scenes in the Shazam movie was perfect but so I'm this is basically a double one for the same movie so I like the third act one even more because the entire Shazam family is born we get to see them and I love it and I think it's beautiful I think everything in this movie is just beautiful it's perfect it's awesome it's funny it's sad it's everything so is there anything you want to see in a comic book movie? It's a fun... You, you can have fun with this movie. So, yeah, let's move on to number seven. Coming at number seven is the Dark Knight Rises fight scene in the sewers. And in this fight scene, this really shocked me when I saw it in the theaters because Batman lost. Like, he gets his back broken. Like, he gets his spirit broken. Like, 
Bane just beats the shit out of him. And I was watching, I'm like, oh my god, is Batman gonna die? Because I thought Batman was gonna die. Like, after Bane defeated him, I thought he was dead. Like, I was really shocked that ba Batman lost. Because if you ever saw something like that, it wasn't a comic book, like in a video game or a TV show or a comic book or a comic a movie or anything comic book related, to see your favorite hero get defeated by the villain is shocking. This was the first movie, comic book movie, where I, and fight scene where I ever saw a villain to beat the hero. And it, it's and it's always shocked me since because of how good it is. And, oh, it's just so good. It's so emotional. Like, you feel bad for Batman that he hasn't, like, because like, he hasn't learned his martial arts. He doesn't remember them. And he, he has been Batman for eight years, if you remember. So yeah, this scene, so this is an iconic scene from the Nolan Trilogy, so let's move on to number six. And for number six is the third act fight scene in Spider-Man 3 with Venom, because this actually also shocked me, and I think this one actually shocked me more, because when I was making, um, talking about The Dark Knight Rises, that fight scene, that how it shocked me, I forgot that this one shocked me more, because this was the first Spider-Man movie I ever watched, and... When the news reporter said this could be the end of Sp the end of Spider-Man, I thought, "Oh my God, Spider-Man gonna die?" Because I was very little when this came out, and I didn't know a lot back th about Spider-Man back then. So I'm worried, "Oh, they're gonna kill him off," and I was scared they were gonna do. But I'm glad they didn't. So, so if you're like a little kid when this came out, it's like that moment where you're thinking, "Oh, is Spider-Man gonna die?" Like it's you're thinking if your main hero is gonna die, it's gonna be really sad for you. So it's like the Dark Knight Rises where you think, oh, your main hero's gonna die. And yeah, it's a heartwarming thing. And it's a, it's, but Peter does get a sad ending. He does lose his best friend. And I say this is probably the saddest, the most, I say this is probably the saddest ending of all, of all the Raimi trilogy because Peter loses his best friend. And I believe he stopped being Spider Man after this. But he could still be in Spider Man. But he probably is having a life with Mary Jane. But he probably isn't Spider Man that often now. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say about number six. So, let's move on to number five. Now, coming at number five is the first Watchmen fight scene you see at the beginning of the movie. And I say, you feel bad for the comedian in the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. In the middle of the movie, you're like, oh, no, fuck this guy. I'm glad he's dead because he shoots a pregnant woman. I believe her name is Lady Silk. He, like, rapes Lady Silk's mother. Well, tries to and until he stopped. Um... He's like, he beats up, he beats up these people who don't, who like, who don't, like, fuck, tell, like, just random people, like, tell them these vigilantes to go away, like, not all, is telling them to remain calm, and he just go, jumps, a chameleon just, not chameleon, the comedian just jumps down and beats the shit out of them, and not all is just that, is jumps, jumps down and is like, what happened to the American dream, and the chameleon, the comedian is like, it came true. So yeah, all those flashbacks of him being an asshole, but at the end you do feel bad for him because it is emotional because, like, he does say, like, it's all, America's all a joke, like, mother forgive me, like, you see a little bloody thing on the little thing right here as you see, and yeah, so that's why I put this at number five, how emotional it is, and I think, I also think that Watchmen is also an underrated comic book movie, and I think it's really good, and just people don't give it, people just don't give this film enough attention, and this was made by Zack Snyder, the guy who made BVS and Man of Steel and half of Justice League, and he's about to release a Snyder Cut. So yeah, this proves that he makes good movies. Same with 300. So yeah, this is at number 5. And I, I suggest you watch Watchmen. And coming at number 4, it's a Spider-Man 2 vs. Doc Ock fight scene. It's not the fight scene that makes this scene great, it's the train scene, like many have explained before. And I, put, I would put this at number 1, but I find the other 3 a lot better, but... It does create one of the most iconic scenes in comic book movie history. Like, when Doc Ock re re breaks, like, the train thing that controls the train, like, he br it's destroyed, and Doc Ock's like, you have a train to catch, and he gets off the train, he, like, on a building, and Spider-Man has to think of a way to stop the train, and Electric Cube gets in his face, like, the Max, he can't see the Max, so he has to take off the Max, and he sees that the train is endless stop, and it's going down, like, to a place where they all die, and he goes in front of the train trying to think of something how to stop it. So he, he has this idea where he uses webbings um, on buildings to stop the train from going. And he's struggling at first, but he, he is still struggling while he's doing it. He's, like, making this face. Like, and even, if you really can see his costume getting damaged. Cause, and Peter's, like, struggling. Like, once he stops the train and saves those civilians, he looks, he's like, about to fall off until the civilians stop him from falling. And they, 
bring him inside the train, they're like lifting him and put him down gently, and they're saying like he's just a kid. And he wakes up finding out that his Max, that he's on Max, and the people in the train said that they won't tell anyone. And this proves that, and Peter knows that there are still good people in America, in New York City, in America. So yeah, this is at number four. Coming at number three is the train scene in Batman Begins, and I say this is the best fight scene in Batman Begins, and I say this is one of the best fights in a DC superhero movie. I still got one more DC movie to talk about and another Marvel movie to talk about, and you probably know what they are, And but whatever. So, I say this scene is really awesome, and even though the action, you might say, uh, it's not that good, but the music... The music makes the action look amazing. Like, the action gets you pumped up for the action. Like, like especially the scene where Batman says, like, I'll never have, I don't, I don't, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. Like, he splits the train in half, and he, he, he uses it to glide and escape, and Ra's al Ghul has the option to survive, but he lets himself get killed along with the train, and the train blows up, and so, yeah. So anyone thinks, who, like, oh, it's Batman's fault that Ra's al Ghul, Batman just let Ra's al Ghul die. He did not. He did not. Ra's al Ghul's a ninja, and he has the option to live. So yeah, this is at number three. That's all I want to say. The music gets me pumped every time when I watch this scene, and it's probably one of the best scenes I've ever seen in a comic book movie, and probably the best fight scene of all time. But these two did... Well, this next one and the other one did it better. Now, coming at number two is the third act of the Spider-Man 1 movie, where Green Goblin and Spider-Man fight. Now, I find this a lot better than Spider-Man 2 fight scene, I'm sorry, but for me, this one feels a lot more emotional, and it has more heroic moment. Well, I won't say a more heroic moment, but I feel like a more badass moment, like, for Spider-Man, like, when he, like, gets his strength back. And it starts with them where Goblin, like, puts, throws Spider-Man into a, some abandoned, I don't know what it is, some church, I think. I wouldn't say church, I don't know what it is, but I know it's abandoned. But, and Spider-Man, after Goblin, like, throws a bomb in his face, Spider-Man gets his ass kicked. Like, like, Goblin's just whooping his ass. And you feel those punches Spider-Man's getting. Especially when Goblin punches him in the face and blood comes out. You feel, like, the motion that Peter is feeling right now. You feel like your a- Goblin is beating you up. That's what I feel. I feel like he was beating my ass. Just, like, I feel like Green Goblin was beating me up. Like, that's how I feel when I watch this fight scene. Like, you feel like you're Spider-Man right now, and you feel like you're getting your ass kicked by the Green Goblin, until when he, about to stab you with, I forgot what it was, but Spider-Man catches it, and that's what you feel, you feel strong again, and you feel with this strength and anger, and you throw it down, and you put, you get the wall, get the wall in the fight scene, and Goblin's like, whoa, and he, uh, this like, wall, brick wall, is like, whoa, like I said, and he gets up, and Spider-Man swings, and he beats his ass, and and then we get this emotional moment where Goblin removes his mask and reveals to be Norman Osborn. And what they talk to, it's emotional. Especially this last one, Peter says, I have a father, his name was Ben Parker. And Green Goblin said, God speak, Spider-Man. And Spider-Man gets his spider sense. His spider sense goes off and the Goblin board comes and about to kill Spider-Man. But he do- it misses him and ends up in the Green Goblin. He's like, oh, and it kills him. And he's like, Peter, don't tell Harry. And Norman dies, and and I just think that scene is more emotional to me, and that's why this is at number two. And coming at number one is the final Dark Knight fight scene between Batman and the Joker. Now, Batman reaches to the top of this construction site, and Joker's waiting for him, and Joker gets the two dogs to attack Batman, and Joker gets a crowbar to beat the shit out of Batman, and... Batman, like, throws dogs off him, and he's about to, like, and he beats up Joker a little, and Joker gets away, and Batman uses his, like, detective mode to find where Joker is, and Joker appears out of nowhere, and hits him with a crowbar that breaks a window, and Joker puts something on, puts this thing on him so he won't get up, and Joker says, like, one of the, one of the, um, boats will blow up. And there'll be fireworks. And Batman's like, there won't be any fireworks. And Joker's just like, and here we go. And then we see the boat scenes where both people are deciding whether they should blow up one or not. Like, the, there's prisoners, like, saying, give me the bomb. 
he takes it and he throws it into the ocean because just to know like he doesn't care or either he knows they're not they don't have the option to do it and they think that they're going to die and the other bo boat sides they're up, are about to do it but then they decide not to and then Joker's like his smile goes like and Batman's like what are you trying to prove so that someone's up when well, he throws a crowbar and Joker's about to blow the boat both boats up. And he tells Batman, speaking of, do you wonder how I got these star scars? And Batman's like, No, but no, you got these. And and Batman throws Joker off the, the construction site and Joker's about to fall to his death and Batman uses the grappling hook to save him. And Batman gets him up and Joker's like telling him where like Harvey Dent is. And Batman leaves Joker to be arrested by the cops. It probably went into Arkham. So yeah, it's a little short fight scene, but this has a spe this is a really good fight scene and it's a special place in my heart. And I say it's the best fight scene in the entire Nolan trilogy. So yeah, and I say it's probably the best comic book movie fight scene besides like the Avengers movies, but this is the best out of all of them. So yeah. I put the Avengers movie on this list, but it's gonna again that seems unfair, so yeah. So let me know what you think of these. Make sure you and make sure you give a like and subscri subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. But tell me what are your favorite comic book movie fight scenes. Just, and you can't count Avengers movies. You have to count solo comic book movies, because the Avengers w movies will obviously take the cake. So, yeah, bye.